Around two years ago, I reviewed No Man's Sky and called it a good game, but very boring in what it was doing. And I hoped that game would change in the right direction, at least the direction that thought that was right. And two years later, I can simply say that game did not go in that direction, but boy, the game has changed and the developers are commendable for the things that they are doing with this game. And in this video, we're going to be reviewing No Man's Sky and discussing whether it is worth it to buy right now more than six years after its release or just whether you should ignore it as a failed game so without further ado let's just get it started and as always with every single one of our videos i'm going to be giving you the answer right away whether no man's sky is actually worth it or not and the answer is yes no man's sky is absolutely the game that you should experience if you haven't experienced it no matter what you think about that and if you have played this game only during the launch or even the first few years after the launch you should get back to this game. But again, this game is still not perfect, at least, well, not for me. Let's just discuss all the great things about this game and some of the bad things as well. So let's get it started. And if you want more reviews like this one for the older games or newer games, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. The channel is growing with an immense rate and I cannot thank you enough for this. And here is for maintaining this growth and hopefully reaching a new heights together. Well, now back to No Man's Sky. For the ones who doesn't know what is No Man's Sky, so genre-wise, No Man's Sky is space, survival, sandbox, crafting, exploration game. It's rather the mix a lot of different genres and it's very difficult to put in one specific genre. You're playing as a traveler. You're playing in this giant procedurally generated universe consisting of, well, seemingly infinite number of planets and star systems. There is no point telling you there are 18 quintillion or septillion planets or things like that because, yeah, for all practical purposes, the universe is basically infinite. And you spawn on this random planet having no idea who or what you are, where you are, and you should, well, discover what is happening around you. Story-wise, there is nothing exceptionally amazing about this game. There is a story, but you can simply just ignore it completely and you will not be losing. You actually need to progress the story a little bit to unlock some very important information and important places like Anomaly Station. Yeah, but yeah, if you'll just ignore it, you're not gonna lose a lot of things. And the game can actually be divided into few different, well, genres or stages. When you start the game, game is basically purely a survival game. You will need to repair your ship, you will need to find the resources and you will need to basically survive because you don't have a lot of things and you cannot do a lot of things. You cannot even effectively mine the large amount of resources, which makes the game a bit, well, grindy at first. But this part is a survival part and it actually makes you familiar with the game. This part continues around few hours, like maybe five or six hours at max, until you will go through the story enough and unlock more recipes that will give you, well, ability to, well, survive better without even thinking about dying just to the bad storm and bad weather. And after this, the game is actually opening up and here where you have a choice to do a bunch of things. The game is not giving you any specific choice to do the things, but here is where the game is becoming true sandbox. Here, from, from here on, you can continue and being just explorer and just explore by a bunch of different planets for the resources or just for the life forms because yes planets and both living forms are and living life forms are fully procedurally generated and you can actually make pretty good amount of money just by discovering the different species and different creatures which is a great thing to have you can just continue playing as a regular rpg with the different missions and you can just get missions from different space stations and anomalies and usually those missions are nothing well exceptional it's just a fetch quest go and deliver this thing here go and take this thing from here and deliver it there go and kill this amount of enemies go and find this amount of creatures scan this amount of creatures and things like that it's nothing exceptional but the enough to keep you busy. You can also invest yourself into building a basis and even entire settlements which was not available during my previous review and which is pretty pretty cool thing to have. You also can invest into your freighter and well have a giant mobile base. You can become sort of bounty hunter as well and with an outlaws update you can actually recruit a wingman 
which is a breath of fresh air for the game because yeah now we can have a combat not alone and basically you can have your own kind of crew doing a different well interesting things in the galaxy plus the pirate raids and just pirates adding the additional flair to the game giving you a bunch of things to do and i'm gonna give the credit where credit is due with all of those things, including a bunch of different additional transport vehicles like mechas, uh, ability, to, ability to tame different creatures and even breed them, grow them and even ride them with the settlements and bunch of bunch of other things. You have a lot, a lot, a lot of things to do for at least 50 hours of the game. But the game is actually littered with one very big issue that I still did not find a solution for, which is pretty easy to actually solve for the developers. And it is the resource grinding game. You see, no matter what level you are and no matter how advanced you are, you have to mine your resources manually or just go and buy it from, well, stores. And if you don't want to buy it and if you want to have your own resources, you need to go from planet to planet and just mine them manually. I'm not talking about some specific like very rare resources like plant-based resources like plant-based resources because those resources can actually be grown on your basis and even on your freighter but I'm talking the very basic resources like ferrite and cobalt and very very basic resources. You still need to go from planet to planet to gather them. Granted you can gather the huge amounts of them all at once but you will still need a lot of them. And this mainly goes to the survival resources that is used to take off from the planets, like sodium that is used from the environmental protection, the oxygen and things like that. So you need to gather those things constantly, even at the later stages of the game. And this just breaks my immersion and this makes this game a, a bit more tedious than it should have. The solution that Hello Games can implement is just creation of the mining settlement. Imagine your base is not just being a vanity place where you can just enjoy what the amazing things that you built. Imagine that your bases are fully functioning mining settlement. Imagine that you built a fully outfitted outpost and ships are flying from this outpost to mine the resources available on this planet and this will force you to build a different basis on a different planets because different planets have different resources and imagine incorporating your freighter and your frigate fleet that you can build with the freighter just building just bringing those resources to your freighter and just collecting them in your one giant mobile space base that would have been just great but right now it's quite tedious and that is actually the biggest turn off for me because when you're finished with an exploration and you will be done with an exploration in a few dozen hours because yeah despite hello games increasing the planet variety by a lot it is still not infinite and it cannot be possibly infinite you will start seeing the same things over and over again and yeah procedurally generated creatures can go just so far until you see but very similar things and even if they are different you just don't care because yeah you can tame a few of them you can ride a few of them and then you just don't care granted all of those things that i'm saying right now is coming in an end game like at least like 50 60 maybe even 100 hours later it's a very end game thing until then the game is insanely fun. And compared to the previous review, I have watched my previous review from a few years back. If, uh, if back then the game was fun for the first maybe 20, 30 hours, right now the game is pretty fun even for 60 and even 80 or maybe even 100 hours, which is a huge improvement. But yeah, it's, it's still, but yeah, it's still not there. But seeing where the game is going and how it's going, through these different iterations, I wholeheartedly believe that game is not done yet and No Man's Sky will continue amazing us and will pretty soon become a must-own game for everyone in everyone's library. But right now, the question is this, is it worth it? To buy. So game is available on Steam for the base price of $59.99 for tier 1 countries and $34.99 for tier 2 countries and it can go as low as $23.99 for tier 1 countries and $13.99 for tier 2 countries. The game is also available on a game pass both
both on Xbox and on PC. So is it actually worth it or is it even worth it to get a Game Pass for? Well, I would not get a Game Pass for The No Man's Sky, but if you have a Game Pass, it's one of the must-play games, especially on an Xbox, because the game runs amazingly well even on Xbox Series S, where I played a little bit, but majority of my game I played on PC. And game being pretty mature and pretty old, game is very often on a sale, so for the sale price, the game is 100% worth it. I would not pay $60 for this game, not because it doesn't deserve it, but because you will most likely find this game for much cheaper than that. But for like $30 or lower, game is basically must own because you're going to have a lot of fun from it. But don't expect the hardcore space simulation game if you are a fan of Elite Dangerous or X Universe or Star Citizen. It's not the same thing. Comparing No Man's Sky to Elite Dangerous is the same thing as comparing Fortnite to Battlefield 4. In the latter case, the, they're both shooters, but they're completely different things, and the same is for the No Man's Sky and, and other space simulation games. So, the comparison between those is, well, not actually a good idea. Overall, is the No Man's Sky is worth it, and is it better than it ever was? And the answer is, well, yes. The game is absolute amazing story of the redemption of an improvement, and it might not be the best game ever, as the developers have promised, but it is actually much, much, much better than I've ever expected it to be. And the thing is that it's becoming better, and most importantly, it's becoming better for absolutely free with zero microtransactions and zero DLCs, and it's the same for everyone on every single platform, plus with an addition of the VR. Boy, this game is simply a gem and a must-have. Again, not everyone will enjoy it, especially during the endgame phase, and especially if you kind of hate the survival games, because yeah, first few hours is the purely survival phase. But even though I hate survival games myself, I pretty enjoyed the first, first few hours was actually not that bad. So yes, game is absolutely worth it, and you should get it, and I cannot wait to see where the No Man's Sky will be taken in the future, and I hope that this future will come soon enough. Well, this will be it for today. Let me know in the comments down below. Have you played No Man's Sky and when did you play it? Was it during a lunch or was it near the, well, today's period? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for being here with me. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe for more videos like this one and I'm going to see you in the next one. See ya.